Good morning, Facebook. Uh, good morning, Mount Gilead. I hope you all are doing well today. Um, boy, it looks like we're having a little bit of technical difficulties here. Oh, there you go. There's about three seconds where I couldn't see if this was live or not. So I hope you all can hear me uh, now. I am uh, I'm taking the devotional outside to the patio, so hopefully the internet isn't too bad. Uh, we'll learn from the mistake, I guess. Let's see here. I think. Yep, it's okay. Okay, so if you're if you're watching right now, if you can let me know if you can hear me and if the quality is okay. Am I am I flashing right now, or is that just on my screen? <laughs> one of, one of the amazing things about these uh, Facebook lives is I cannot tell what. Uh, what your experience is when you are uh, watching. Um, so, well, hey, good morning, Sonia. I see Sonia uh, signed in there. So, um, so this morning, what I want to talk to you uh, about is, um, you, you know, apprenticeship to Jesus. We are all on this journey of discipleship, and we are all. Um, those of us who are followers of Jesus are continually working to reorient our lives to the way that Jesus lived his life. Uh, you know what? I think, uh, yep, there you go. We're back. Um, so, but this morning what I want to talk to you about is, for me personally, my, um, my spiritual journey is one of constantly trying to learn and observe more of how Jesus lived his life uh, and then try to uh, add those qualities, those attributes to my life. So I, I think the word apprentice is really helpful when we think about our relationship with Jesus sometimes because an apprentice, um, you know, an apprentice traditionally would have been, say, an apprentice to a blacksmith would have been someone who, um, who worked in the blacksmith shop, observed what he was doing, saw how he handled the metal, how he interacted with the fire, how he uh, interacted with customers coming in, and then over time that apprentice would begin to uh, put those things that he observed to practice. Uh, and that's how I, um, you know, that's how I engage with my relationship with Jesus. I try to read the Gospels, uh, read the whole biblical narrative, and learn who Jesus was, why he responded and did the things that he did, and then try slowly over time to apply those principles to my life. So this morning what I want to talk to you all about is um, a little bit, this past Sunday, Justin uh, White was our guest speaker and he, and he shared uh, an incredible message about um, faith over fear, um, which was really great. If you haven't heard it, I would encourage you to go back uh, to the church website and you can catch that sermon, that message there. Um, but one of the things Justin uh, mentioned, one of the scriptures he looked at was in Mark 5, and he shared the story of um, uh, Jesus when he uh, was approached by um, the Jewish synagogue leader Jairus and um, asked if he could heal his sick daughter. And then in the midst of that, he also was approached and there was a woman who touched his um, just touched the hem of his robe and he stopped and engaged with her and that was the woman if you're familiar with it, the story uh, for 12 years um, but what I think is so incredible about this whole section here in Mark 5 and I would encourage you guys to go back uh, and read it sometime this week is that um, we see in Jesus's life and this is one of the many many things that I admire about Jesus is that Jesus was never caught off guard and when Jesus was interrupted and Jesus was interrupted a lot he always responded um, with 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 grace and with um, with shifting focus sometimes to helping those who were approaching him and so as as I heard Justin mention that that section there over the weekend and I went back and looked and thought about it I thought gosh what what uh, what a good time to be reminded ourselves um, that Jesus did not allow interruptions in his life and in his ministry to throw him off guard. As a matter of fact, he used those opportunities to extend God's love and to, to bless and help others. And, you know, 
we are in the midst of probably the biggest interruption I have ever experienced in my life. I mean, the, the world is interrupted right now on a large scale. Uh, the economy is interrupted. Um, our, our sense of freedom is kind of interrupted. Our, our sense of being in control and being able to prevent, uh, prevent and protect things is interrupted. Uh, every day, those of us who are, are home and working through schooling at home and trying to work from home, um, we're also interrupted from time to time. And so I thought, when I look at what Jesus is doing here in Mark chapter 5, um, it's it's really in incredible, you know. Right before chapter five is the uh, wonderful story of how Jesus calmed the storm in in the boat. But right after that ends, uh, it says they came to the other side of the Sea of Galilee, and immediately uh, a man who was possessed with demons ran uh, ran up to him and interacted with him. And Jesus pauses, takes the moment, uh, and he speaks uh, into this person's life, and he gives this person hope. He heals this person and he lets him know that his life is valuable. And then Jesus goes on, uh, you know, from there, um, and it says that's when immediately he was walking in the crowd, gathered around him, and, and Jairus uh, came up to him and said, Jesus, I need you, I need you. I mean, imagine always having people pulling at you, pulling at your attention, trying to, to get you to hear their need as if it's the biggest and only need, um, and being able to respond out of love. I mean, there are times when silly things interrupt me and I get frustrated or short, but, but Jesus is on mission here, advancing God's message, uh, bringing God's kingdom, and interruptions don't bother him. As a matter of fact, he sees them as an opportunity to extend God's love. And so today, uh, this week for you guys, this is my challenge for you, for you and, and for me, is that... Um, Let's try to apprentice Jesus in this quality of being uh, present and ready for interruptions that will allow us to share God's love. Today, whatever it is, maybe when you're trying to get work done and someone comes uh, and asks a question at home, or when you want to go uh, do something, maybe work in your yard because it's a beautiful day and your neighbor comes up to you to talk with you um, because they are just looking for someone to talk to and to hear their voice. Seize these opportunities today, guys. Uh, allow ourselves to be interrupted and to use that to share God's love and grace. Uh, let me pray for you guys. I hope you have a wonderful day. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for Jesus, for Jesus' living example of how we are to live our lives. We thank you that you don't just say... Uh, do what I say, but you say, do what I do, because you gave Jesus his entire life in his an earthly ministry as a living example of how we are to live our lives. So Lord, I pray today um, that we would respond well to interruptions, that we would see them for what they are, and that's an opportunity to share your love and your hope and ultimately your kingdom with the people in our lives. God, it's an honor to try to live more and more like you, to try to know more of who you are. I pray that we, we would all know more of who you are. We would know more of your love, the depths of your love, and that that knowledge and that love uh, would flow out of our lives into the lives of others. We pray all this in your son Jesus' holy name. Amen. Guys, thank you so much uh, for tuning in. Uh, thanks for spending some time with me this morning. Um, have a great, wonderful, and blessed day.